Well, we're happy to be moving on. First game is always uh, in any tournament, any year, nerve-wracking. <clears throat> You'd like to not be done. And, and so, you know, we had all those jitters like, like everybody else. Um, the game itself, I thought that <clears throat> Would help really would have helped us really turn this thing our way into this margin of victory was our offense in the second half. We made it. Uh, South Alabama went to some zone boxing one. The middle of the first half caused us some problems. Uh, weren't getting the ball exactly where we needed to get it against those two defenses. Made we made the adjustment at at half, and I thought our players really responded to our halftime talk about what we wanted to do offensively. And we ended up outscoring them in the paint, which we were down at half. Uh, did a better job of converting off turnovers, which is something that we were, didn't do very well at in the first half. All those things we talked about at halftime. And uh, it was a nice, nice job by our players in the second half. Questions for Nick or Demandre? Nick, you came out on fire there, shooting, uh, I think your first four threes were in. Uh, was a lot of that just kind of the excitement of being in the tournament, uh, getting good looks at the basket, a little bit of both, or, or what were you seeing out there? Um, it was definitely a little bit of both. I was definitely ready to get out there, and after watching last night's game, I was ready to go. But a lot of uh, my shots came off my teammates setting me up, so I just did my part and knocked it down. Hey, Keith, did that halftime speak uh, have a lot to do with maybe uh, taking that game inside? Because you, you were trying to shoot from the perimeter more in the first half, and then obviously you were crashing the boards, and I thought the offensive boards were huge. Well, we, we made some threes. Nick's made some threes in the first half. I think maybe Majuk made one or so. And we got shot happy. And uh, that, you know, we, I think they decided that's how we wanted to go win the game. And I wasn't disappointed with making some threes. God knows we need some. But I was disappointed the way we were attacking inside the, the three-point line. That was what was the difference. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, we just talked about it at half. And uh, I really thought we got it in there, you know, off the dribble and off the pass, uh, you know, where it needed to get, to get against those two defenses in the second half. DeMondre, uh, Coach mentioned uh, outscoring them in the paint the second half. A lot of that was you going in there. Pretty physical game. Does that get you ready for these next few games? Hopefully, uh, as you know, that you'll have to grind it out in the paint? Um, yes, it's really preparing us to, for the next game to be ready since we had a little bye. We just getting ready to um, play the next game. Hey, DeMondre, this is your um, this is your second pretty good outing in the last three, um, coming off the bench and giving the guys some energy. What's, um, you know, are things just clicking for you right now, or what's the key to you playing so well? Um, it's my teammates. They keep talking to me. They stay in my ear, and they help me to motivate me and tell me to go, go get the board. Hey guys, uh, end of the season. You know, obviously tired. Everybody's tired. What, uh, what are your concerns with turning right around and playing another game in 13, 14 hours? Uh, you just like anybody else in every other tournament across the country, uh, you know, this, this is the way it is, and uh, you, you deal with it. We'll get some good rest and shoot around in the morning in terms of uh, and go over our scout. Uh, this is no different than anybody, obviously, no, than nobody else. The other teams are moving on. Somebody's going somebody's gonna to win this tournament, uh, you know, and have played, you know, two or three nights in a row. So I think the best thing to do is, is really just not even talk about it. You know, and and not concern ourselves with. It. I, I can assure you, I, I was the only time I thought about minutes played was when I looked up with three minutes left and we were over 20. And then I said, oh, okay, well maybe I could we could you know take some guys out. But had that thing been inside 20, we wouldn't have t taken them out. And uh, uh, you know we can't worry about that in a in a one game elimination deal. So we're we're not going to start today. Nick Demandre, either of you have a comment on turning around and coming back to play t tomorrow? Um, just like Coach said, uh, everyone across the country is doing it. And obviously, it's a good team with Georgia Southern. And I think uh, if you can't get excited for that, then um, 
we shouldn't be here. So if they don't want to play tomorrow, they won't play. Them. Yeah. I mean, if they, you that's, know, that's exactly what <laughs> I mean. I'm you saying. guys want to play? I mean, or not? You know. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, we will release Nick and Demandre at this time. Thank you for your time, and we will continue with more questions for Coach Richard. Thank you. you know, we talked a little bit about um, three-point shooting back in Monroe during the week, and um, just the way it played out for you guys to have nine makes, it's one off the season high, and you know, we had talked that you know, you're going to need some of these in a tournament scenario, so um, you know, just how happy were you to see some well, of those it, go it, in? It, the, the threes in the first half, uh, you know, really uh, obviously helped us because we weren't doing much inside the three-point line. And so this happened to be one of those games where instead of the three-point line being gravy for us, it ended up being the main dish, you know, for us in the first half, which is very unusual. Uh, but, you know, you know, we got – Nick got some good looks at it and, uh, and, and knocked them down. So this one time the three carried us in, in, uh, in that first half. And so as you and I talked about earlier, you're going to need some threes somewhere along the way in a turn three-game setting. You know, it's, it's going to play a factor. There's no question. And, and it did for us in the first half tonight, so that was good to see. Coach, I read where you had uh, watched them survive in advance to try to get up for the tournament. Obviously, the new shirts for the team with Warhawk uh, Destiny. Has that been kind of the rally cry this week as you try to get them to make it to uh, Saturday or Sunday? Well, not really. I, 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 you know, it's my 30th year in, in college coaching as an assistant and a head coach. So I've been through 30 conference tournaments, and this is what I know about them. I don't know what works. I really, who knows what works in these conference tournaments. They have a life of their own. And, and kind of what I've chosen to do this time uh, is really just try to treat it like another, the next game. And, and, and not, get, not talk big picture too much or some major slogan or some rallying cry or, or anything. Just, just because that, that's the best way this particular team has operated all year. Anytime I built something up too much, uh, it hadn't been as good with our team in, in terms of the next game. And when I don't say a whole lot and just keep things even keel, this is what you did good and bad in this game. Let's move on to the next. Here's the scout. When I keep it like that, it's, it seems to have worked better for us. And so that's what I'm trying to do in the tournament. Any more questions for Coach Richard? Right here in the back. Coach, are you going to kind of take uh, Georgia State's blueprint uh, for defending Georgia Southern as, as kind of your own for tomorrow? Well, we beat them. We, we split with them. I'm going to take that blueprint that we, the one we beat them with, and look at it uh, uh, that way. It's hard to take Georgia State's way of playing because they play a matchup zone that is in two or three different ones that's so unique, you know, in our league and really in the country. I mean, that's unique. And so we, we don't do that, you know. We don't play like that defensively and, and can't put it in, you know, in, in this short of time. So I think what we'll do is go back and look at the game that we played them at their place. And, uh, you know, had, we won the game and, and, and had some success at different things during that game. Some things not, not so good. But I, I think that will be more of a blueprint for us than, a, than a, somebody else. Well, first and foremost, I would like to uh, congratulate Coach Richard and um, ULM. They, they played an outstanding game. Uh, we knew uh, it was going to be difficult, uh, you know, coming into this game after playing last night and felt like we had a pretty good game plan in mind. But uh, unfortunately, we weren't um, able to rebound the ball. They did a lot of tough things. And, you know, when you give up 21 offensive rebounds, that's uh, – you know, certainly a recipe for disaster. But uh, congratulations to them and uh, wish them the best of luck. But, uh, you know, I felt like uh, we fought. Um, you know, we didn't get off to a very good start. We came back, uh, made some plays. But, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, this is a team that uh, is, is still evolving and, 
you know, we, we got swept by the top three teams in this league. So we're not, we're not quite there yet, but uh, we're, we're going to be back. We're going to be back. Any questions for Coach? Right here in front. Hey, Coach, Adam Hunsucker from the New Star Monroe. We talked on the teleconference yeah, yeah. this week, and I remember you telling me that, um, you know, with as athletic and long as ULM yeah. is in the front line, that if they're making shots, they're going to be really, really hard to beat. And, you know, shooting 50% from three and having one of their better offensive outings, it kind of proved like what you just said. Yeah, they're, I'll tell you what, th this team, th there's no reason why they, they can't win this whole thing. If they, sh if they make 50% from three, um, they're going to have an outstanding chance to, uh, you know, represent the Sun Belt in the NCAA tournament because they do defend and they don't beat themselves. I, they, they, you know, seven turnovers. Um, they're they're very disciplined. Uh, they just, you know, sometimes go into droughts and where they can't score the basketball. But if if they're making shots, especially from the three point line, uh, they're going to be a really tough out. Pat Greenwood, South Alabama. Uh, Coach, what did you tell him in the locker room after uh, after this one was over? Uh, talked about how proud I was. We we accomplished um, you know something that we didn't do last year. We we not only got to the conference tournament, uh, but we won a game. And the thing I'm really proud of, though, when we were two and ten, sitting in the hotel in Little Rock, Arkansas, and the guys came together. They uh, looked each other uh, in the eyes. They talked about what we needed to do uh, from here on out uh, to be better, and we finished 10 and 11. You know that's not that's not great, but at the same time we really turned the corner. We came together, and then I talked a lot about uh, you know what Deontay meant to this program, and um, you know there nobody can convince me that he's not the most improved player in the Sun Belt this year. Uh, that kid was is an absolute warrior. He's going to be a tremendous uh, success when he leaves the, the University of South Alabama with his degree here in the uh, spring. Um, and I told him we're going to be back. We we want some more. We're going to take a, a about two weeks off, and then then we're going to get back at it. We've got a lot of people coming back. A lot of people that uh, have this experience. Uh, we had some guys setting out, and we're not going to rest on and be satisfied with this. So. Um, you know, that was really the message. Uh, Deontay was emotional coming off the court. Yeah. Uh, you've had that experience as a player coming off the court for the last time. Take us through that from, from your perspective as a player and then you see it as a coach. You know, as, as a player, it's, it's really tough. When you, when you put that uniform on for the very last time, uh, it, it doesn't hit you till it, till it hits you. And as you're walking off and, and you know that's, that's it, um, you go through so many emotions. Uh, you, you have a lot of visual uh, images of, of your, your career, no matter how long or short it is. And one of, one of the things we talk about um, in our locker room is never, never take for granted the opportunity to put on a uniform. Um, you know, four years goes by so fast. And, you know, injuries and different things, you just, you just never know when your last minute on the court's going to be. So, so always cherish that. And, you know, a, as a coach, and when I see Deontay walk off the floor, you, f you feel this sense of, of joy because there's a student athlete that his senior year, he did everything possible he could to will this team to where it is. He maximized every opportunity. And as a coach, when you see that from a player and then you see his teammates in the locker room crying and hugging him, it, it, it really um, brings a great deal of, of joy and satisfaction to me personally. Any other questions for Coach Graves? Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you.